In this video, uh, we're going to learn the transition probability of a uh, continuous Markov chain. But before uh, we follow uh, the textbook's presentation, I want to say that it's kind of um, pointless to consider the transi transition probability of a continuous Markov chain as if they are discrete, because a continuous Markov chain has uh, two components. One component is, uh, of course, uh, this uh, continuous Markov chain um, makes transitions from state i to state j, all right? And of course, and also it has this uh, Markovian property in that uh, this transition is independent of the past, um, which is uh, similar this part is similar to a uh, discrete markup chain, which makes transition at the fixed uh, discrete time point. The second component of continuous markup chain is it once enters a state. there is an exponential distributed amount of time before leaving the state. So, And uh, um, in previous video, we assume that uh, this ti, so using the textbook notation, this ti is of exponential distribution of uh, parameter, or say rate v sub i. And this means uh, the expectation on average will remain in the state in, uh, of a time of this uh, 1 over this rate. And because of these two components, by the way, uh, they are both independent of the past, okay, um, it's kind of pointless to consider a single this uh, transition probability, Pij, but this time instead uh, we have uh, transition probability uh, matrix function. This actually depends on the time, right? And apparently, and we denote this uh, matrix as capital P of T, and apparently um, P of zero is the uh, identity matrix. Okay, because when the time is uh, zero, we, we just stay there and we don't make any transition. So, um, and this uh, pij of t is simply um, xt is j given x zero is i. Um, this is basically, uh, we make a transition. This is, we make a transition from i to j after uh, time t. And by the way, because of the Markovian property, this is the same as uh, we can shift this process by a time s, and uh, these two uh, probability are equal. As we can see, um, it actually depends on the time instead of a single uh, this uh, um, constant transition probability. Therefore, uh, what happens instead of this uh, transition probability matrix? We would like to consider what we call the transition rate matrix. Right? 
and let's say this is Q. And so here I'll, I'll give you guys uh, the definition um, first, and that is uh, um, the Q simply equals the derivative of this uh, transition probability matrix evaluated at t equals zero. This a single this cop by the way on uh, this uh, um, derivative this p prime of uh, um, zero is nothing but uh, p i j prime evaluated at zero and this matrix i of j um, which is uh, the number of state okay. And uh, um, so this Q actually uh, encodes both um, the transition of a uh, discrete uh, Markov chain with transition probability IJ, which uh, Earlier, we mentioned that a continuous Markov chain has two components. The first one is actually it makes transition similar to a discrete MJ from I to J, okay, and it has a certain uh, transition probability PIJ, and then and then what happens is uh, it also has a second component which is Q. This Q, this matrix Q, also encodes the information of ti, which is uh, exponential distribution of vi. And let's uh, shall see in a moment um, um, how do we obtain this q. Okay. So first of all, uh, we have to assume here in the discrete counterpart of this continuous uh, Markov chain, We assume the PII of its discrete counterpart is zero for any state i. This is simply because we don't make transition. This simply means we do not make transitions from i to i. We only make transitions from i to a different state if, let's say, if there, it's simply because uh, if there is transition from i to i, it is as if we stay at i and there is no transition. Okay. So uh, it's very convenient to formulate uh, PII with zero. Okay. Now uh, we are curious of how do we obtain uh, this matrix right here, which is a transition weight matrix. Um, first of all, um, what happens is uh, let's consider uh, a Poisson process, which is uh, n sub i of t. Poisson process and with an inter-arrival time satisfy an exponential distribution of rate uh, v sub i. All right. And now what happens is uh, um, this v sub i here, okay, it's one of its interpretation is the transition rate. out of the state i, okay? Um, or say how often uh, this mark of continuous mark of chain leaves state i. So here, um, by definition of the Poisson counting uh, process, the, the alternate 
uh, definition we learned last lecture. Uh, we have the following, that is, probability of an i uh, for a very small infinitesimal time, this equals 1, is uh, vi times h plus high order term with h for h uh, very small, okay, for h positive but very close to 0. And we also know that uh, this counting process um, has value greater than or equal to 2 is a high order term of uh, this uh, h. Because of the state space, by the way, because of the state space uh, of the counting process, is 0, 1, 2, etc. And we can simply deduce that uh, this guy 0 is 1 minus uh, vi plus a uh, high order term, vih plus high order term of h. As a result, uh, we can compute the following limit. That is, uh, the limit h goes to 0 plus h has to be a positive number. Uh, the probability of uh, x, this h is a small increment of time, is not i, all right, is in another state. We can think about uh, it's in, we can interpret this as uh, x of h is j uh, for any other j, but the, the point is it's not i. And uh, x of 0 is within i and divide by h. Okay, so if we try to uh, interpret uh, this probability, this probability simply says at t equals 0, we're at state i. But when t is h, uh, we're at state j, or say in another state that's uh, other than i. Uh, which means, this means we have one transitions. And if we use counting uh, this process to represent the same event, this is the same as we make uh, one transitions within this uh, small increment of time, h. And this is uh, simply and i of h is 1, and this divided by h. Now by the definition, we simply plug in uh, our Poisson process. This is of order um, v sub i times h plus high order term of h divided by h. And because the higher, by the definition of high order term, this part when taking limit of h going to 0 is 0, the rest is simply v i. And uh, now, what happens is, uh, for pij, um, what happens is, uh, for pij prime, you value it as 0, and this is simply, we just let uh, h goes to 0 plus and this is simply a pij of h, which is, uh, we simply assume uh, this thing here uh, becomes j. By the way, this is uh, uh, overall collectively, uh, x is uh, all other state. But now if we specify a single state j, what happens is uh, we will simply have and now this is uh, probability of we still 
uh, make one transition. Sorry, this is in sub i. We still make one transition. And uh, okay, let me uh, write in detail. And uh, this is a probability of we still make one transitions uh, within time h and this transition this transition is from uh, i to j and this divided by h and by the way uh, because the two components of uh, ct mt so uh, transition from i to j this transition probability is independent with um, the waiting time or say the lingering time in state i um, as a result this event right here and this event right here um, can be split into a product. That is, uh, first we make one transition within h, so this is ni of h is 1, and next is we transition from i to j, so this is multiplied with pij, and this is divided by h, and by previous result right here, um, this is simply uh, v sub i times pij. Okay. Um, and as a result, uh, this is the uh, off diagonal entry, which is qij equals uh, this guy. And now let's consider the diagonal entry. All right. Uh, when i is j, what happens? The rate, okay, um, when i is j, we simply consider, which is a diagonal entry of q, we simply interpret this as the rate of staying um, at the uh, same state for an infinitesimal time period, uh, diagonal entries of uh, q. So um, PII H, which is the same thing as uh, the probability of XH is I given X0 is I. If we think about this, um, this is also um, 1 minus. probability of x of h is not i, okay, and x0 um, is i. And as a result, because we know that um, this right here, this probability right here, it means uh, this, uh, we have one transitions or more uh, within time h. And by the exponential distribution and this equals by uh, assumption of uh, um, the uh, exponential distribution uh, we make, uh, so let me add remark here so we probability of zero transitions within h is one minus uh, vih plus high order term, and the probability of one transition within h is vih plus high order term, and we make it two transitions or more is a uh, high order term of h, so we can ignore it. And as a result, this is nothing but uh, we make uh, 
uh, one transition uh, within time h, which is minus uh, v i h plus a uh, high order term. So plus a high order term minus a high order term can be also treated as a, a high order term with plus sign. As a result, p i i of zero take derivative with the same thing as we let h go to zero plus p i i of h subtract p i i of zero. And by the way, this is uh, one. This is simply because uh, when the time increment is zero, uh, we simply stay at uh, state i. And this is divided by h. So this becomes one minus v sub uh, v i h, h goes to zero plus subtract one divided by h. And this is negative v i. And it's actually uh, negative. So, um, what happens is, and by the way, this is a diagonal entry of uh, QII. As a result, um, for example, if we have a state space uh, 0, 1, 2, a three state um, Markov uh, process, um, continuous time Markov chain, and which of which its discrete counterpart. Um, has transition probability pij, which is constant, then the q, the q, um, which is the transition rate for this uh, continuous Markov chain, uh, can be then written as on the diagonal we have minus v0, minus v1, and minus v2. And on the off diagonal, we have uh, v0, p0, 1, and uh, v0, p0, 2. And here we have uh, v1, p1, 0, and v1, p1, uh, 2. Right here we have v2, p2, 0, and v2, p2, 1. 